So welcome to this week's episode of Barefoot Travels. So this week's episode is going to be slightly different. It's going to be more information based. And it's going to be based off of how to fly internationally with a dog. Um, I know I've had anxieties about it. There's lots of information to know before you do it. And you want to make sure that you have all the right paperwork so that you don't have any issues when you arrive in your destination country uh, with customs and immigration. So this is going to be information based off of traveling with a dog that is a pet, not a service dog. And it's going to be about traveling with a pet in cabin. So in a nice soft-sided soft -sided case um, that goes underneath the seat in front of you. So like I said, there is lots of information that you need to know before you travel internationally with your furry little friend. So there's also lots of different reasons why people need to travel internationally with a dog, whether or not you're moving to a different place or you want to take your dog on vacation with you or like for us, we live on our boat full time and our boat changes places. There can be all sorts of reasons why you would need to fly home from the boat. Um, and it's very easy to put the boat on a mooring or a dock in different locations, but not always easy to find someone to look after your dog. And if your dog is like mine, it's like my child. So I would rather take my dog with me um, where I can look after her myself. So during this episode, I'm gonna be using the Bahamas as our destination country. Um, but the information I have is very broad to um, all different countries. You just need to research that country that you are going to. So that brings us to my first point. I've tried to consolidate everything into easy steps that you can follow um, to make this process easier for you. So step one um, is research. So you have to do a little bit of your due diligence on this and you have to do the research yourself. I found a lot of times when we've gone to the vet to get the health check before we travel, um, the vet themselves, they don't know all the details for the countries that you're going to. As the normal goes, um, a lot of the vets, they don't have to deal with traveling pets very often, so it's not something they're well versed in. So that being said, because we do live on a boat, we use a website called Noonsight. Noonsight is fantastic for sailors and boaters who are traveling from different countries because it's a very easy spot for all the information that you need. Um, so on this website, I'm going to do a little bit of a screen share here. And I'm going to show, so this is the website here. And once you choose your destination country, um, there'll be three lines. You click on that and one of the options is pets. So down in this category, it'll give you a lot of information about what you need to do to bring your pet into that country. Whether or not it's being up to date on vaccinations, having a health check prior to arrival, or getting an import permit before you arrive. If Noonsight doesn't have this information, they will typically have a website for the Department of Agriculture for your desired country. And on there, you will be able to find more information about what you do need. So again, you have to do your due diligence and you have to do the research yourself to figure it out. So also under the category of research, one of the biggest hindrances to traveling with a pet internationally is getting something called a titer test. So a rabies antibody titer test um, is a blood sample that is done and it typically takes anywhere from five weeks to three months to get your results. And it's a very expensive test to do. Some countries require you to have a titer test done within a year of your travel. Um, other countries only require you to have one titer test done in the pet's lifetime and as long as you've kept up with the rabies vaccinations, that titer test is still good. And some countries don't even require a titer test. But for places like the BVI's, Turks and Caicos and a few other of the Caribbean islands, you have to have that titer test done within one year. So under this research category, you want to start researching as soon as you are planning your travel really because sometimes it'll take three months to get everything done. Okay, so that brings us to step two in this process. Um, so step two is applying for the different permits that you may need. So again, for the Bahamas, we do have to have an import permit for our dog before we arrive in the country. So this typically takes anywhere from a week to, it could take as long as a month. There is a man who has set up a company in Nassau, um, Wellington Pet Import Permits. 
I will put a link in the description below with his information, um, but he does everything for you. Wellington service does cost $90, but he does all the legwork for you and it makes it so easy that it's well worth it. You go onto his website and you input all of your information. So your dog's name, um, colorings of your dog, a picture of your dog, a picture of the vaccinations that your dog currently holds. Uh, rabies is an important one there. So once he receives your application and payment, um, he will then drop off your application to the Department of Agriculture in Nassau. Um, and as soon as he hears anything back from that, he sends you an email. He is so professional, I can't say anything more positive. He's, he's great and it makes the process easy. Typically to get your import permit, when we've done this in the past, we've had it within a week. If you do this yourself without Wellington's assistance, it does take a lot longer. It can take anywhere from five to six weeks because you have to post it off and send a mail order for the money. It is slightly cheaper, but it takes so much longer, it's not worth it. As soon as Wellington gets it back, he will then send you the import permit, um, which comes as two documents. So you'll have your import permit and then you'll have a health certificate page that needs to be filled out from a vet prior to uh, departure. A lot of the, I've done a lot of research for the different countries heading down the Caribbean, because that's where we're planning on going, and a lot of different countries require this import permit, where you give them the information of your pet prior to arrival, they send you an import permit, and they know that you're coming. So in this import permit category, um, it can take some time for different countries. I've heard that some of the Caribbean islands down the chain, they don't email you straight back right away. And it can be, you can play a little bit of tag with emails trying to get your responses back. With this part of it, you do want to put, give a lot of extra time as well. For example, the Bahamas, you can apply for your import permit up to a year before you come. It's valid for a whole year. So even if you end up changing your trip or you don't end up going, that permit is still valid. So for those first two categories, the biggest advice I can give you is give yourself a lot of time to look into it. So that brings us to step three in this process where finally you're able to book your flights. Um, so again, this video is for a dog that fits in a soft-sided carrier and will be um, traveling in cabin. So after you've booked your flight, I always call immediately. Uh, <laughs> I might be a little bit OCD on this, um, but you have within 24 hours to make that phone call to the airline that you're flying with. Um, and the reason you have to do this is because you have to book your pet on. You cannot do it online. You have to physically call the airline. Um, I guess people do this now. You have to physically call the airline um, to book your pet on. It typically costs anywhere from $85 to $120, depending on which airline you're flying with. And your pet becomes your carry-on item. So you're only then allowed to have your a personal item with you. You cannot have a rolly suitcase as a carry-on. Your pet is your carry-on. So the reason I always do this within 24 hours of booking my flight, a lot of airlines have a limit to how many animals they can have on a plane at one time. Um, a lot of airlines, it's two pets for per flight because they have to space them out accordingly and if anyone has allergies or that kind of thing, they need to make sure that they're spaced out enough on the plane for the other passengers. So that being said, if you call within 24 hours um, and they don't have space for your pet, you can then change your flight without any extra fees um, and you can then get on a flight where your pet can come with you. So also when you're booking your flight and you're looking at the different airlines that you're gonna fly with, make sure you look at the baggage part. Every airline has information on this under baggage for traveling with pets. Some planes have different size requirements for the pet carrier that you have. So the pet carrier that we have is TSA approved, which means that it has ventilation on at least three sides of it. It is a soft-sided carrier. It is a, has a waterproof bottom. I'm not trying to sell you a product here. There's lots of different good ones that you can find on Amazon, but I found one that was TSA approved just for the peace of mind that the airline's not gonna tell me it's not good enough. With the airlines that I've flown before with Fox as a carry-on, um, she is 17 pounds. And what I found is most airlines, uh, the pet and the carrier combined has to be less than 25 pounds. 
Um, and you also need to be able to carry it comfortably. Think about being in an airport, you need to be able to walk around and carry your pet without it being too heavy. Um, some of the airlines you will see, they say that your pet has to be able to stand up and turn around and their ears can't touch the ceiling of the container. We've never had an issue with that. Um, whenever we've checked in at the airport, Fox has always been calm and curled up in her carrier and they just look and see a cute little puppy dog and they don't say anything about the size. I've never had anyone weigh our bag. That's not to say they won't in the future. Um, so just be prepared for that. The biggest advice on this category is make sure your dog is nice and calm and chilled when you check in at the airport. So step four is preparing for travel. So for the Bahamas specifically, within 48 hours of departure, you have to get a health certificate that says, yes, my dog is healthy. It has no issues. She has had her flea and tick medication. She has a fecal float test done. She has all their vaccinations and they sign the piece of paper. This is a category that gets on my nerves all the time. We have flown with Fox quite a few times now and every time we get a health certificate, I think the only country that has ever asked to see this document is Canada. Everywhere else, nobody seems to care. Um, and getting this health certificate can cost anywhere from $85 to $150. And when no one looks at it, it's like, why did I bother? But it is one of those steps that you need to do. You need to have the paperwork because on the off chance that someone does ask to see this piece of paper, if you don't have it, it could mean that you need to get on the next flight back home or they could impound your pet. So once you've got your health certificate, you're basically ready to go. You've packed and everything. One thing I would recommend before travel is getting your pet used to the soft-sided carrier. If they're not used to being in a box, um, it can be a little bit touchy. <laughs> I mean, when Fox, when we put Fox in the carrier for the first time, she wasn't overly keen on it. Um, so what we've done every time before we travel, I'll put one of my t-shirts or one of Davy's t-shirts in the box with a bunch of her toys to try and get her scent in there so she feels as comfortable as possible. If you are nervous about your pet being a little bit noisy or anything on the flight and you want to get medication to calm them down, we have only ever tried um, a CBD biscuit with Fox, which didn't really do a whole lot. Um, she just gets in her box and she gets a little bit quiet anyways. Um, but if you are gonna get a medication for your dog to chill them out a little bit before travel, make sure you test out that medication well in advance of travel because sometimes that medication can uh, do some funny things and you don't want your dog to have smelly farts on the plane the entire time or have an accident or anything like that because that just makes your day of travel that much harder and we all know how smelly dog farts can be and if you're stuck on a plane for however long it's not fun <laughs> and there's only so many farts i can blame on davy so that brings us to day five which is travel day yay <laughs> So for travel day, they say the best thing is to book your flight so it's earlier in the morning and try and do direct flights if possible. We've always done early morning flights with Fox. We have done connecting flights with Fox and it has been absolutely no problem. It is a little bit, it makes it into a little bit of a longer day. Um, so I do feel for her. Um, some airports let you have your dog out on a leash so you can walk around with them and they can sniff and they can just be a normal dog but some airports like Toronto Airport okay okay so Toronto Airport now they have an announcement that goes over the radio where if your pet is not a service dog it must stay in its carrier at all times I don't like this change because that means that not only is she in the carrier then for the three and a half hour flight to the Bahamas but she also has to be in the carrier for three hours prior to the flight when we're checking in at the airport and we're waiting for our flight to take off. And if you have any delays like we did when we were coming back to the Bahamas this time with de-icing the plane, which took an extra hour and a half, she was trapped in her poor little box for like seven and a half hours. I felt terrible. The one place at the airport that you're always allowed to have your pet out of the carrier is at the pet relief station. 
most airports have these now and they're they're really cute they're set up with like a little fire hydrant and a little fake grass area where your dog can go to the bathroom um i always in foxy's carrier in the back compartment i always keep a little ziploc bag with some tissues and some wet wipes just in case there is an incident that we need to take care of i have a ziploc bag that i can put it in so it doesn't smell um or any of that jazz so i always make sure that i have some snacks and some water for fox um on travel days and in the morning before our flight i don't feed her too much breakfast and we always try and wear her out a little bit. So take her for a long-ish kind of walk so she can do her business, but just to get some of that energy out, especially if she's gonna be sitting in her box for seven and a half hours, I wanna make sure she's had a little bit of a run around to stretch her legs. So that brings us to the final step. You've done your flight, you've arrived in your beautiful destination. You're going through immigration and then you go through customs. Customs are the ones that are going to want to see your paperwork, or not um, but they are most likely the ones who are going to want to see your paperwork for your dog and they will then either direct you if it's a smaller airport they'll deal with you directly or if it's a larger airport they will direct you to the department of agriculture unit um, where you go and you show your paperwork all right so now you've enjoyed your beautiful vacation with your dog or like us you're just back home on your boat either way um, if you are on a vacation and you have to then head back home after your trip, you need to make sure that you've done all of these steps for your home country. Does your home country need an import permit? You'll have to get a health certificate before you leave and go back home. This is also more challenging when you're in a foreign country. You'll have to be able to find a vet that can do a health certificate for you to go back home. Um, so there's lots of different fees and paperwork that need to be done to fly internationally with your dog. We think it's worth it. We love traveling with Foxy. Uh, we love having her on the boat. Life just wouldn't be the same without her. Um, so it's worth it, but it does add an extra element to travel um, that you should be aware of before you start this process. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode and I hope you found it enjoyable and informative. Um, I hope it helps you travel with your little furry friend on your next adventure. If you have traveled with your pet, leave it in the comments below of where you've gone and how good of an adventure it was. Um, don't forget to give this video a like and share it with any like-minded friends. I am a barefoot man, barefoot to make my stand. I bear my souls for all the world to see, yeah, yeah. I am a barefoot man, he planted firmly in the sand. Bear your souls, come along with me. Lose your shoes, lose your blues, come along, come along with me.